Welcome to Sandwiches of History, Vacation Edition. Uh, our guest host today, I consider to be the premier sandwich expert. He's been the driving force behind SandwichTribunal.com since 2017. And you can follow him on TikTok and Instagram at Sandwich Tribunal. Plus, he and Sandwich Dad and myself are going to be uh, launching a podcast called Sandwich Talk in the near future. Please welcome the sandwich maven extraordinaire, Jim Beheimer. Welcome to Sandwiches of History. My name is Jim Beheimer. I'm guest hosting for Barry today. And some of you may know uh, that I also consider myself something of a sandwich historian, or a sandwich anthropologist, maybe. A few years ago, I researched and wrote a deep dive on a sandwich from St. Louis, Missouri, called the St. Paul Sandwich. Now, the St. Paul Sandwich in St. Louis, Missouri, is generally served at Chinese restaurants serving African-American neighborhoods. Um, it consists of a patty of egg foo young served in white bread, with mayonnaise, pickle, tomato, lettuce. Um, and it's really a lot better than it sounds like. But there's a big controversy as to why is this sandwich that's only served in St. Louis named after St. Paul, Minnesota, which is, you know, hundreds of miles north of there. So in my research, I found advertisements for sandwich rooms, tea rooms, etc., in St. Paul, serving a St. Paul sandwich as early as 1902, I think. Um, but I couldn't find a description of that sandwich. The earliest recipe I could find for a St. Paul sandwich was in this, Salads and Sandwiches and Specialty Dishes for Restaurants and Tea Rooms by Emery Hawcock. Now, Emery Hawcock owned a tea room in Monmouth, Illinois. His recipes are written very sparsely, and there's a point that he makes in the foreword where he says, If some of them seem a trifle brief, it is because I expect those who read this book to be at least partially experienced in the art of cooking for and serving the public. To them, too much detail would be unnecessary and boresome. So, as you can tell, this is going to be one of those recipes where there aren't a whole lot of measurements or anything like that. But let's dig in. So here is how the recipe reads in the book, word for word. Chop fine a slice of ham, a slice of onion, a slice of green pepper, and a small sweet pickle. Stir into a beaten egg, and fry brown on both sides. Serve on toast with lettuce and olives. Of course, as you often find in these older recipes, this book was published in 1928, since I forgot to mention that, there is no instruction to season anything with salt and or pepper, whether because they left that to the diner at the table, or because that level of detail would, as Emery Hawcock put it, be too boresome. In any case, though I would normally season an egg like this in the pan, I'm leaving it off. And since it does not indicate how to incorporate the olive, I will assume that it is intended to be the classic olive garnish. Okay. Now let's give the St. Paul sandwich, as written by Emery Hawcock of Monmouth, Illinois, a try. Now I've made this before, and you know, it's basically, it's kind of a Denver om omelet on toast with lettuce, right? Um, the main difference being that there's sweet pickle instead of tomato. And that sweet pickle is key here. It's really, really nice, that little touch of sweetness. And of course, the combination of ham and egg is very savory. Um, obviously, this hasn't been seasoned at all because there was no call for seasoning in the recipe. So it could stand to use a little salt and pepper. So I think I am going to try to improve the baseline version just a little bit here. First, I want to salt and pepper this omelet a little bit. Give it a little bit of seasoning. Next, I can't help but think it's just a little bit dry. So I'm going to touch it up with just a bit of Kewpie mayo. Okay, now let's give this St. Paul sandwich, hopefully improved with a little bit of salt and pepper and Kewpie mayo, a try. See, that just makes all the flavors pop just a little bit more. Just brings out that onion, brings out that green pepper, brings out that sweet pickle. 
and then the mayonnaise kind of helps everything go down a little bit smoother. So this is really good. I don't know that I'd trade it in for the regular St. Paul sandwich as they serve it in St. Louis. If you're ever down there, I encourage you to stop into a Chinese restaurant and uh, give one of those a shot. It really does seem like how this could be a proto version of that. You know, I'm not big on giving things numeric ratings, but that's the name of the game here at Sandwiches of History. The regular version of this, without the improvements, I'm going to give it a six and a half. Uh, with the seasoning and the mayonnaise added to it, I'll go ahead and, and call that a, a seven and a half. This is a pretty good sandwich. It's not a world beater, but I'd eat one of these anytime. All right, thank you. Oh.